If you haven't liked our Facebook page yet, now is your chance. Facebook.com forward slash SF17 Studio Chatter. Get involved in the chatter. Got an idea for us? Share it. Often in our justice system, more attention is put on the perpetrator, but what about the victims? Let's welcome Heather Frost, the Spanish Fork Public Safety Victims Advocate. Hi, Heather. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. You guys know each other before we get into this serious subject. We You've do. known each yes. other. We went yes. to Spanish Fork Middle School, Junior High, High School and together. High school. That's Class right. of 89. That's right. Woo, woo. Gosh, I was how old? I was just in the middle. We've already talked we about talk our age before here. Sure. So we it's have. not secret. Oh, okay. We're mortal. Yeah, thanks for being here. Well, thank you so for having So you worked at the police department for a number of years then. I have worked. Uh, yes, I've worked there for probably around 15 years okay just recently I was uh, put into the position of victim advocate and you know to me it was just what does that mean victim advocate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that means I'm going <clears throat> to what I do is I help the victims of crime okay. so there's there's mm -hmm. let's say an officer goes out on a domestic violence uh -huh. let's mm -hmm. just bring that up and um, so the suspect is sometimes taken to jail, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, cited or uh, summoned. It kind of just depends on the situation. Okay. But uh, if they are taken to jail in that serious situation, I make contact with the victim and mm -hmm. I offer resources and protective order, okay. which is important because mm -hmm. I want these these people to be safe. Right, That's our number absolutely. one priority. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll just tell you an experience I had today. Uh, I received a call, and you know, with domestic violence, there's a cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, I think the, I think they say that it takes seven instances before wow. before a victim actually decides that to do something that they uh, just aren't aren't going to take it anymore. Right, and um, right. today, I received a call from one of those people. Okay. Um, her, her last incident happened over the weekend when her uh, boyfriend was served papers that he was to appear in felony, on a felony domestic violence over at Provo Court. Okay. And this was, so this was a summons and he, you know, he probably hadn't even thought about it because the it happened on Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. Wow. The, the incident happened on Christmas Eve, and, mm -hmm. and the court system's kind of, you know, slow. And uh, anyway, so he received that summons, and he was just awful to his girlfriend. Just awful. Did, were they living together? Yes. Oh. But she is the one that filed that against mm -hmm. him. Yes. Oh, but yes. she was still living mm -hmm. with him. Yes. Okay. Like wow. I said, this right. is the cycle. Right. So, so yeah, we're like, well, why is she why still there? there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are so many barriers to yeah. to leaving uh, a violent relationship, and and I'll tell you, she she made the call. She decided mm -hmm. that this is what she's going to do, and so I. I showed up. Uh, we loaded my car at her house. At her house. Okay. We wow. loaded my car with. Now, just imagine this mm -hmm. is her home. Right. And she she received approval to come to the women's shelter, mm -hmm. and he was at work. And so while mm. we while he was at work, we loaded one tote, one tote of belongings. And she that's just literally what she grabs has. really quickly. She left everything else behind, not knowing if she will. Uh, ever see those things again? Right. And I know Wait, those that... are those are material belongings, but you know her her safety really is the number one priority. But are there and, thing, there are times that th these victims never see either those people or their home again? Right. Yeah. I, I never mean, it depends that. on the situation, but she is okay. she is that afraid. It's quite possible. We'll be working on protective order, which will make it. So the suspect, the defendant, isn't able to contact her or mm -hmm. come near her mm -hmm. or, I mean, really even text, email, right. anything, you know. And when people have a protective order against them, how often do they really follow through with that? Is it pretty well you know, it, it, <laughs> it's it depends on the situation, okay. honestly. And again, I bring up the cycle. I right. I help with dismissals of protective orders probably just as often as I help 
Right, and petition no for a well, order. Wow. Dare I ask, any children involved? Not in this situation. Not in situation. Many, many what, times there are, hmm. though, and that complicates things because the the other party is still allowed their parent time, and mm. so they do have to have communication. Mm, that, that because if the, if the violence isn't toward the children, then they, so then they see it as okay. They still have parental and rights. What, and what would you say the percentage of that kind of abuse occurs here in Utah County? Do you, do you know it's, just roughly? It's higher than we'd like, like to Like domestic violence, yeah. is that what you're yeah, asking? Yeah, as okay. far as domestic violence or... Oh, I wish I had a number for you. I'm sorry. Oh. I will tell you that's the biggest part of my job. Okay. When I, in my report to the city council recently, mm -hmm. I think I, I reported 88 cases that I've been following since July oh, wow. of, of domestic okay. violence. So besides domestic violence and maybe a woman being abused, what other, what do other victims look like? Mm -hmm. That you would deal with other okay so other others that I deal with um, other calls that I help with uh, I do help the prosecutors for mm -hmm. our, our city and um, okay so we'll take it down clear down to mm -hmm. not not that this isn't well important. Right, right, yeah. important. thank you thank you right. yes so if there's a, a burglary or a break in okay. or um, items damaged and a criminal mischief I can help with uh, help the prosecutor find out restitution amounts. So when when the defendant goes to court, they're ordered to pay the victim back mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. loss. Okay. And mm -hmm. so that's part of that's part of my job. Also, uh, sexual assaults. Okay. Mm -hmm. All ages. All ages. Male or female um, there. Okay. You know the the children a lot of times will use the awesome resource of the Children's Justice Center, mm -hmm. and they have advocates there specialized okay. for children. So oh, that's so good. good. Elderly abuse. Uh, what about even pet abuse or any anything like that? Yeah, we uh, haven't had. I haven't had a case of that, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I would definitely help with that. Re there another recent cases when a neighbor's dog got out and and got into. Um, a neighbor's goat, and and her, mm -hmm. they loved this little <laughs> goat, and it was injured, and so and right. anyway, so yeah, right. so I mean, there's all ranges. Everybody of needs the an advocate, that's right? Yeah. <laughs> Even Zelda. Well, it the sounds goat. like it sounds like it's a, a fairly new position. Mm -hmm. How for did for, for, oh, for yes? Oh, for, just yeah. for you or mm -hmm. for the city in general? The city has had. Uh, an advocate that they they shared with Salem and Payson okay, for so, many okay. years. Right, so just in July, mm -hmm. okay. we hired Heather and oh. to a full time position. Full time, okay. yes. And so I'm full time they're keeping you busy. It sounds very like busy, very I busy. can't even imagine a city of yes. this size now just having like basically a third mm -hmm. of an advocate to help right. people. I can't either, honestly, because you're not actually counseling people per se. You're giving them where to turn resources yes, yes. Okay. and 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 I'm I'm there to help uh, even if I want to offer resources to anyone mm -hmm. uh, like I said this this person that I helped clear back from January today she was ready for all the resources that are out there and available to a year? So, oh no what four months five months yeah, is that yeah, yeah. It's, that's a it's, long, it is it long is time. a long time it is and you know people don't I see these things every single day mm -hmm. and so I know about kind of how it goes and and what's out there and the helps and things but mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm called out on are um, sudden or unexpected deaths. Mm -hmm. um, and From, again, being a victim or just And this isn't age? necessarily a victim of a crime. It's just oh, okay. really to offer support. Right. That's another oh, okay. thing I do in mm -hmm. my job. And so, you know, people just don't know what to expect. When, mm. when it's a sudden or unexpected death, there's going to be the medical examiner involved and... Mm. Um, of course, they're grieving. They're, uh -huh. it's, sometimes mm -hmm. it's traumatic. It just kind of depends on the situation. But, but we want to offer to, yeah, mm -hmm. the tools mm -hmm. and where they can turn to. Because there has to be a police investigation. So while the police are looking mm. into all of the circumstances and, and gathering evidence, I'm with the family and, and talking to them about kind of what to expect and what... Um, <sighs> What what they can do right. and, and resources that are out there to help them mm -hmm. through the. This through is the, a heavy job. <laughs> it can be. What it's you, been a big week. What do you week. do on the weekends to decompress? <laughs> no, do you know kidding. what I love to do? I love what? to run. If you see me out oh, running, yeah. okay. that means it's been a busy week, a hard week. Or <laughs> That's kind I of how you I just kind of let it go. I and, do. I do. Yeah. And have you always been drawn to this, to helping others? 
Do, one thing about working at the police department for so long and seeing all these things happening uh -huh. and not being able to do a single thing was very hard for me. Okay. It was very hard. So when I was put into this position mm -hmm. and, and I can't stop these things from happening, but at least now I can, help. I can do everything yeah. I can to help. Yeah. And so that it's rewarding. It is. Oh, it can, Heather, it, that's it awesome. can be, and it's it's really an honor to, um, you know, take a stand for these these people. Just just like today, you know, it was it was great mm. to get her away from a, a horrible situation that she was living in. Right. Well, bless you. So how, how do people get in touch with you then if they are in crisis? I mean, how, what is the process? Well, how, procedure, I mean, of course, what? if it's emergency, call 911 and oh, the officers yeah. or dispatch will mm -hmm. call me out to, to assist. Mm -hmm. If it's something that they're, they've been living and they're ready to, you know, do something about it, they can get a hold of me at the police department. Mm. Okay. And what's okay. that number? So yeah. it's 801-804-4700. And that's Heather Frost? Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, you just, well, they can shout out down the phone, I need right. help. That's right, yeah. that's right, and I'm ready to you know, I had ready a ready friend and his daughter, um, she was pregnant, they were married, and he, she was being physically abusive, and she, she got out of the house, and they lived here in Spanish Fork, and because of the circumstances, they used a, a victim's advocate in another city, but they said that that person spent countless hours, just heaven sent for them to know what was the process now, because she didn't go through the cycle. She's like, we're done. One time and, and, mm. and so he just kept saying that that victim's advocate was absolutely amazing. So it was so neat to hear it from that side that how helpful your job is. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear yeah. that, and, and you do get involved, and you want to help, and, and you make a connection, and so uh, you, you, I will spend countless hours, whatever it takes. Yeah, like filling out all the paperwork, because mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. they need to go through that, that's and that's a process. Okay. And, and I have just one more, and, yeah. and you, you mentioned men. How are men victims? Not that I'm saying they don't get victimized, right. well, mm -hmm. but how? Yes, and, and that what? does happen. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to court on a case where, where the wife was the uh, suspect, and, and he the husband is the is the big time. Mm -hmm. oh. There's some crazy women out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 me, okay? I'm no. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> that's all the time that we have. Thank you oh, so thank much thank for all you of your time and energy. Awesome. Thank you. Coming up next, every day we hear about youth under stress. We may have some help for you.